you would not have to resuscitate me. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord for six years in St. Paul Christian Fellowship. Amen. God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen. I want y'all to just work with me a little bit. I'm going to try to blow through this, all right? Amen. God is good. And, uh, you know, as we close out, as we start and close out this uh, particular six-year church anniversary, I have to admit that I, I was in a bit of a conundrum as to uh, what to speak on this morning. Because to be honest with you, church, a lot of people don't even know why we do church anyway. Yeah. Much less celebrate anniversaries and those type of things. People are actually struggling to get themselves back into the house of the Lord. Yeah. So, you know, if they're struggling to get into the house in 2024, uh, you know, people are actually thinking of why in the world should we do church in the first place? Yeah. You know, COVID really took a big hit yeah. on people's mindsets. Yeah. So uh, some people really just come to church because they feel uh, like they want to be involved in something good. You know, there's a community feeling that they have, you know, when they come together. But this is what Jesus said in John chapter 3. Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so you don't even understand what you're involved in if you're not born again. We thank you today, though, that if you are here and you are an unbeliever, we do thank you for your attendance. Amen. Amen. But the truth of the matter, church, is we have to get back to the attitude of doing what's right because God said to do it. Amen. Nothing else, no notoriety, no pats on the backs, no accolades, Amen. because that will demonstrate that we really revere him and who he is. There's so much information available to us in this uh, information age that there are millions of people who still don't know his story. Not only do they not know his story, they don't know the history of the church. That's why people don't come to church. They don't know the history and what it means to be a part of God's church. They don't understand the struggle of the early church fathers to stay true to doctrine right after Christ left this earth. They don't understand the struggle of the Protestant Reformation or the overcoming of the Dark Ages. People do not know the impact of the printing press and the risk that people took simply to open the scriptures to all people, the common men. And this was in opposition to the edicts of the Pope and the edicts of the Church of England. Yeah. People do not know about the reign of Bloody Mary. How many know who Bloody Mary was? I... Nor do they understand the demise of those who put their lives on the line simply to make the word of God accessible to us, the common people. Yes, we understand that the apostles of Christ died for the gospel. But after that, there were other people who promoted uh, the doctrine of Christ and upheld the doctrine of Christ who also died. People such as Justin Mara and Polycarp. And not only, not only that, church, the people such as John Wycliffe and Tyndale, they were also martyrs for the sake of the word of God. They were people who uh, struggled to get the word of God to the common people that we might know God in all of his fullness. When you look at Hebrews chapter 12, it says, when you look at these types of things, it says, wherefore we are seeing that we are encompassed about, about but, but, by so great a cloud of witnesses, the Bible encourages us to lay aside every weight of sin which doth easily beset us, and let us also run with patience the race that is set before us doing what? Looking unto Jesus, right? Amen. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and now he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so it, it, it encourages us in verse 3, it says, consider him. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, consider him. Consider him. Consider him, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Amen. Some people have a mind where they're just ready to faint. Amen? But verse number four concludes, it says, Ye have not yet resisted unto blood. All of these old saints that have gone on before us, they resisted unto blood. That's Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 4. And so today, my prayer is that God would help us to uh, uphold the faith of 
the, the purity of the faith and that we would not faint in our minds. Amen? Amen. But the question is, will you be ready? When that day comes, if you have to lay down your life for Christ, will you be ready? And so as we assemble today, we assemble in honor. We assemble in reverence, not just today, but any time we come together, we have to remember those that have gone on before us. We have to remember those that have sacrificed for the call of God. See, it's not just about our comfort, church, but it's about the call of God. Amen? Amen. And so how are you living? How are you living out this morning? What are you thinking about in your mind? Have we taken the sacrifices of those that have gone on before us for granted? Have we taken Christ's sacrifice for us for granted? What is your mindset today? Because we are in life exactly where we are because of somebody else's sacrifice. And quite possibly we are where we are in life because we ourselves did not want to sacrifice. We must honor the Son by returning to a biblical mindset. How many know what a biblical mindset is? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is not come see, come saw. It is not say la vie. It is not a lukewarm attitude that permeates society today. The church should have a different mindset and a different attitude. We must rekindle the fire of our first love with a fervent heart, not just for God, that's well, but we are supposed to have a fervent heart for our fellow man. We are yeah. supposed to cry out for other people's soul salvation. And yeah. so my prayer is that we would have a prayer for the lost, yeah. a prayer for the in indifferent. Although the flesh is weak, the Bible says that the spirit is willing. Amen. And we know that God is able to do exceeding, abundant, above all that we can ask. The question is, are we asking? When we recognize the state that we are in, church, all we have to do is repent and draw near to God. Because the Bible says that when we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. And so I just want to take you to the book of Matthew chapter 16, verses 11 through 28. And I want to talk to you from the topic of, for the sake of the call. For the sake of the call, a mindset for the church. Yeah. A mindset for the church. When you get there, say amen. 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 <clears throat> and it reads as follows. How is it that you do not understand, Jesus speaking, that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? In verse 12 it says, they understood not how he bade them to be aware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. <coughs> but he said unto them, But whom say he that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Y'all should have been at the pastor's corner this morning. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Last verse, verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death 
till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Amen. Just ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to his truth. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Point number one. Believers should have a mindset of concern in regards to the scriptures. How many know that everybody doesn't take the Bible literally? Mm How -hmm. many know that everybody doesn't have a, a, um, a love for the truth of God's word? Uh, they can take it or leave it. But as believers, we need to have a mindset of concern for the scriptures. What does the Bible say? Do we care that people use the Bible to deceive other people? Do we care, like on a Sunday morning when a preacher gets up and says, let me just speak to you from my heart, and he never opens the Bible. Do we care? <laughs> Jesus asked his disciples in verse number 11, he says, how is it that you do not understand that I speak to you concerning not natural bread? What he was telling them was to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Beware of what they are teaching, Amen. And we have to understand, church, that, we have, that we're being taught every day. Every day you wake up, you're learning something, whether you believe it or not. Whether it's CNN or whether it's something on sports, whether it's something on entertainment, they are teaching you something. And so you always have to be mindful of what the Word says. You always have to be mindful of does that line up with what God says in His Word. Because we receive stuff in our minds subliminally, Amen. unconsciously, Amen. right? And so you don't even know where some of these thoughts are coming from because you did not stop it from entering in by filtering it with the word of God. Amen. Jesus said, I'm talking to you, uh, disciples, because I want you to understand that the, uh, the teaching of the scribes and Pharisees is just like leaven. How many know what leaven is? Any bakers in here? Any, anybody that knows how to bake? It's yeast, okay? And yeast is able to spread and cause other damage. Then Jesus said, uh, he says, well, what, what's the, he, he, he asked the question, he said, uh, well, what are they teaching? And they said uh, that he was in league with Satan. This is what they were teaching. They were saying, look, Jesus is doing miracles only because he is in league with the devil. Mm -hmm. How many remember that in John chapter 6? Mm -hmm. Okay. And see, he says you have to beware of what they are teaching. Mm -hmm. Religious leaders, if they can't get to you physically, they will spread lies about you. And they will use the Bible, if they can, to attack your character and identity. And so we see this happening with Jesus. And so guess what? If people can attack Jesus, they're going to attack you, church. Amen. They're going to attack you just because of the truth of God's word. The enemy wants to discredit the gospel at all costs. Amen. If they were doing that to the Lord, then they would do it to you. That's because of the call of God that's on your life. For the sake of the call to present you prevent you from doing what God called you to do, and to prevent you from making disciples, which is the commission of the church in Matthew chapter 28. It is important, church, that all of those that are around us in our sphere of influence understand who Jesus really is. And so whatever they believe that's different than what the scripture says, we should ask them personally, how did they come to that conclusion? How did you come to that conclusion that uh, Jesus was just a good man? How did you come to that conclusion that Jesus was just a prophet? And so what we need to do is understand the scriptures and to guide them into what the Bible actually says. Jesus said unto them, he says, did you never read the scriptures? And that's a problem that we have today because we never read the scriptures. He right. said, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. He's talking about himself. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. The Father has established Jesus as the foundation, as the bedrock of truth. And so the Bible goes on to say, Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to power. That's in Matthew 21, 42 and 44. Have you embraced, church, the fact that there is salvation in no other name? That there is no other name given among Heaven, whereby men, the Bible says, must be saved other than the name of Jesus. Have you embraced that fact today? Now, if you don't want to get involved in other people's lives concerning witnessing or telling the truth, guess what? You need to consider yourself to be a disciple. You need to consider that this is your mission. People around you are your mission field. And so if you don't feel comfortable, you need to do something 
to feel comfortable to reach out to them. Because it's not about your comfort, church. It's about the call. Yeah. What is your mindset today? Are you afraid to witness for Christ? Mm -hmm. Jesus wanted to know, what are they saying about me? What are we agreeing with? Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some people say you're John the Baptist. Some people say you're Elijah. Some people say you're Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. As a disciple, you're going to have to deal with false doctrine. You're going to have to deal with it in the workplace. You're going to have to deal with it in your house. You're going to have to deal with it in the church, which means you are going to have to dedicate yourself to a mindset of quality study of the scriptures. That is apart from your Sunday worship. Okay, you just can't get it on a Sunday. Amen. God is calling us personally, each and every one of us, to get before him and to get into the word. We have to have a mindset of concern in regards to the scriptures. That's point number one. Point number two is when you have this mindset of concern, it will lead you to proper confessions. Amen? Amen. Yeah. How many know we need proper confessions? Amen. Yeah. We need to have proper confessions of what the word says of what God says we can have and who we are in God. Yeah. Let me get to point number two. God is good. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. Yes, and all the time. God is good. All right, now. I'm moving on. I'm still in the text. I'm in verse 15. He says, who do ye say that I am? Jesus asks uh, 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 pertinent questions. What do they say about me? Now, what do you say about me? Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered to him and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. When there is a concern for the word, then and only then can there be confessions of truth. Revelations from the throne room of God that come for the sake of the call. Not because we think we know so much. But simply because God loves us enough to show us the benefit of when we honor his son. When we honor the son and we believe the son, God will bless us with revelation. He'll yeah. show us who he is. Yeah. Romans 10, 8 through 10 talks about confession. It says, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart, right? That God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Thou shalt be saved. Yeah. For with the heart man believeth, right? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. Yeah. Unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the yeah. scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall never be put to shame. Yeah. You gotta have a mind, church, to say the right things about Jesus yeah. if you want to be saved. Amen. You gotta have a mind to say the right things about Jesus if you want to be healed. Amen. You gotta have a mind to say the right things about Jesus if you want to be delivered Amen. and set free from bondage to walk in the liberty of the Spirit. Yeah, man. You don't need to be talking all crazy about God if you don't know what He's doing in your life. Yeah. Uh, the church in the wilderness was talking smack to Moses about God, saying, "Is the Lord among us or not? Is He with us or not, Moses? Can He feed us?" It's a whole bunch of us. Can he give us water like we had in Egypt? Can he give us some of those leeks and some of those onions? Fish heads. Uh, yeah, yeah, the fish head God. But the Bible says the Lord heard what they said. And so we need to shut up before we hurt ourselves sometimes. We can say all kinds of crazy stuff. The old folks used to say, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. He has to be more than just a good teacher to you, church. Uh, that's what we need to say out of our mouths. He has to be more than just another prophet to you, church. And he has to be more than just the white man's religion to you, church. Boy, if he's not your lifeline, if he's not your bridge over troubled water, if he's not your hope for tomorrow, if he's not your doctor in the sick room or Boy, a lawyer in the courtroom, if he's not your peace, or the horn of your salvation, you might need to go back to the foundations of your confession. Yes. And for the sake of the call. Paul said, I don't want to get to the end of my life and find out that I ran this whole thing in vain mm -hmm. to have others uh, have come into the uh, faith and I myself a castaway. He says, I want to know him yes. and the power of his resurrection and 
in the fellowship of his suffering. How many want to suffer? Raise your hand. Yeah. How many is into yeah. suffering? Raise your hand. Yeah. Huh? That's what we need to do sometimes. We need to suffer for him Amen. because if we suffer for him, for him, we shall reign with him. Amen. Jesus therefore says, whoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father right. which is in heaven. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Yeah, even our confession needs to be sacrificial. We need to learn how to say what God says. It's not all about our opinion, uh, because our opinions won't last. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says, Thy word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven. Sometimes we need to just give God a sacrifice of praise sometimes. Amen. That's what needs to come out of our mouth. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's it. Yeah. See, people can care less about what we think. Huh? about God, when all they want to know is what does God think about them. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, people are concerned about our, our, how much we know. They want to know, do we care? Does God care about them? Yeah. And so we have to balance our approach to people, not just tell them who he is without telling them what he can do for them. Tell them that his eye is on the sparrow. Yeah. And I know that if he watched over me all these years, he'll watch over you too. Yeah. There's a mindset of concern that we should have as disciples as well as a mindset of proper confession. That's number two. Number three, I'm moving on. There should also be a mindset that the Lord has complete control over his church. No matter what you see going on, God is still in control. Yeah. Yeah. Except the Lord build the house. They that labor, labor in vain. This is for all y'all preachers out there in Psalm 127. Let go, preacher man, and let God. Uh -huh. Get out of the way. Sometimes all you're doing is making yourself sick, trying to control everything, trying to do everything, trying to manage everything by the power of your flesh. You need to let more grace come in. Amen. You need to let that same power to witness for Christ in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, and all the parts of the earth, come in. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, for the sake of the call, lest you burn yourself out. I mean, know we got a lot of burnt out preachers out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. amen. What am I talking about for the sake of the call? I'm talking about uh, the viewpoint that Paul had in Romans 12 when he said, in view of God's mercies. Uh -huh. When you look at all that the Lord has done to gain our love, to gain our devotion to him, how he clothed himself in flesh to take on the punishment that we deserve on yes. the cross and how he has invited us to share in his inheritance by simply serving him in humility of mind. I'm talking about the mercies of God. Your mindset should be on how the Lord has not given us what we deserve. Yes. I'm talking about mercy. mercy. Yeah, I know the light bill might be due, but uh, you know God has been merciful all that time and all those days that you did have lights. Yeah. Yes. I know they want the car back because you ain't made no payments, but you had the car for six months. You had time to figure out how to get yourself together. Amen. But I wouldn't be paying no $800 car payment anyway. Mm -hmm. Great time. Yeah, yeah. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Yeah. Now you ought to want to do for him, church, just because. Just because. Yeah, he, he justified you. Yeah. He sanctified you, and, and now he's, he's going to glorify you, and so you ought to just want to serve him for no other reason than he is God. Yeah. You got the right one, baby. You ought to be glad about that. Yeah. Huh? We can't take God for granted. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, and he called us his church. In verse 18, he says, I say unto thee, thou art Peter. Peter means a chip off the old block. Yeah. That's what it means. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That rock was the revelation given by the Father to Peter that Jesus is indeed the Christ, yeah. the Son of the living God. Yeah. He wasn't built on Peter because Peter died, and if Peter died, then the church would have died. But the church has been going on, Amen. and it's going to keep going on. Yes. That revelation is the foundation stone of the church. You shouldn't be preaching any other gospel. And guess what? You can't relay this foundation. All you can do is build upon it. You yeah. can go up and you can go out. That's it. 
However, everyone is now building upon this foundation today, and they still think they have the right to call themselves a church. Mm. They're building with wood, hay, and stubble, and it's all going to get burnt up on the last day. Guys, yeah. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And the bill gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. No weapon formed against it shall prosper. And we condemn every tongue that rises up against it. The remnant church is not going anywhere. Yeah. Because it has a supernatural call and commission to reach the world. And it's established and purchased by the blood of Christ. Yes. So we need to have the right mindset about what the church is. What the church is supposed to be doing in the earth. And work with the church and not against the church. Amen. If you are a leader of God's people, walk in peace today, knowing that you're not the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. Amen. And the Bible says that he will add to his church daily such as being saved. Yeah. There's a concern for scripture accuracy. If you are a disciple of Christ, there is a concern for your confession as well as a concern for the building up of God's church in the proper way. Amen. All because you have a biblical mindset, number four. But there's also a call to commitment to consider. Listen, we're all humans at the end of the day, church. Amen. One minute we can be hearing from God, and the next minute that little devil will be sitting on your shoulder Amen. telling you to do something crazy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, listening to the devil. We can be a hindrance to God's work. One minute we can say, yes, Lord. No. I believe this. And then the next minute, it's like, mm, I don't know if that was God or not. <laughs> Go ahead, boy. Huh? I don't know if that was the Lord or not. Is God, God, was that you talking to? One minute you hear from God, the next minute you don't know if it's God. <laughs> Verse 22, look, it says, Peter took the Lord and began to rebuke him. Lord, far be it from thee that thou shalt go to the cross. I don't want you to suffer like that, Lord. I don't want you to die like that, Lord. I don't want you to be humiliated like that, Lord. Peter had his own idea of how Jesus should do the will of the Father. How many ever been around people that have their own ideas of how God is supposed to be working in your life? Mm -hmm. But Peter never heard the second part of what Jesus said. He says, I'll, I'll be raised up on the third day. Mm -hmm. He didn't hear that part. But Jesus said, get behind me, yeah. Satan. Because thou art an offense to me. Yeah. For you savor not the things that be of God, but those of men. And Jesus said this in verse 24. If any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I'm talking about a mindset today, church. For, so, for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. What profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? And you can't even gain the whole world because it's not yours to gain. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yes, sir. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm -hmm. People do it all the time. Money for your soul. A contract for your soul. A woman or a man for your soul. A business for your soul. Can you deny yourself on this earth for just a few years? That she might gain all eternity. Mm. Ah. The world prides itself on this particular sin. Everyone has a price. How many ever heard that? Mm. Yeah. They believe that they can buy out anybody. Get anybody to sell out. All they have to do is find your particular price. P. Diddy. Do you have a mindset <laughs> of compromise? Yeah. Over commitment? Oh, no. How are you thinking today, church? He put up, he put up five fifty billion dollars, and they still said no. Huh? Try it again. Nope. They want him. They, they don't want his mentor. They want him. Do you have a mindset of compromise instead of commitment? Do you still want to get your hands just close enough to the fire and yet not get burnt? Society today is so punished that the devil doesn't even have to trick people into entering into contracts to sell their souls for fame or fortune. Jesus. People already know that others have done it, and they still want to follow in their footsteps. Oh, so they can end up in a burning hell. Jesus' mindset was to obey the call to commit to the Father's will. Yes. And that commitment to the Father's will brought salvation for us all. Philippians 2 says it this way. 
Starting in verse 4, it says, Look not every man to his own things, but every man also to the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, I want you to hear that, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Yes, sir. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and uh, every tongue should confess of things in heaven and things on earth and things underneath the earth. And every tongue should confess that Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can you commit to the mindset of having no reputation does it have to be your way or the highway can you humble yourself and take up your cross just like Jesus gave us an example of that you too might one day be exalted there is a reward church for the Christian life God who cannot lie promises us a reward for living a sacrificial influential and productive Christian life. Amen. When we have the mind of Christ, Scripture will be important to us as well as our confession of what it says and how it applies to our life. Amen. We can rejoice that Christ is still at work in His church and we can also rest because the foundation of the church stands sure. However, we must believe that we can actually be committed to God. You know there's a lot of people that believe that they cannot be committed to God. Because the Bible says in Philippians 2 and 13, it is he who works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's not even you. Yeah. God working in us causes us to be faithful. Yeah. God working in us causes us to have a desire to serve him. That's it all. Let him work on your mind. Yes. Not just some of the time, but oh, all of the time. time. Amen. Remove the clutter. Huh? So you can actually think. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says an idle mind is the devil's playground. Yes. Yeah. One neuroscientist said that because all we do is regurgitate what the world has fed us, our subconscious mind subliminally, we never realize that we truly haven't developed the skill of thinking. Ah. We're thinking that we're thinking, but we ain't thinking. We're just regurgitating the stuff that's already been put in us. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, when we fully surrender our hearts and our minds to do his will, there is a heavenly reward that no man can take from us. Yeah. Last point. There is a comfort of celebration. How many wait to celebrate? celebrate? One day, when this world is over, I'll fly away. Uh -huh. Verse 27 says, For the Son of Man shall come in his glory of his Father with his angels, and he shall reward every man according to his works. Ain't that what it says? Yes, Amen. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. There was some standing right there yes. under the sound of his voice that saw him after he rose from the dead. When he defeated death, hell, and the grave beginning to come into his glory. God had made us all worthy of his kingdom Amen. and all of his benefits, but we have hindered and limited ourselves by our poor mindsets. Mm -hmm. There are three sayings in one scripture I want to end with, just so you can take the temperature to see where you are of how you actually feel about yourself. I'm not saying this about you, but I want you to take the temperature of how you feel about yourself today. And I'm almost done. If you didn't know it, church, your mindset dictates your life. Yeah. If you didn't know it, your mindset will dictate your life. Yes, sir. Man. Do you really know who you are in the kingdom of God? Do you really know how important you are in God's scheme of things? Here's the first saying. You can lead a horse to water, huh? but you can't make a drink. So y'all didn't know it. <laughs> Is that you today, church? Are you stuck today? And don't know how to move forward. When everyone around you has tried to help you, are you stuck? They've given you the answer, but you haven't applied it to your life. Ooh. 
Huh? They, they take you to the Bible, but you won't get it in your heart. Amen. Here's the next one. It's not about the dog and the fight, but it's about the dog. But it's about the fight and the dog, right? Amen. Is that you? Have you lost the will or the mind to even put up a fight anymore to seek God? Right. Are you on the verge of throwing in the towel? Is that you this morning? No. Here's the last one. You can take the person out of the ghetto, but you can't take them out of the person. person. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say prison, right? Yeah. Take the person out of, out of the jail cell, but they still are. Say, is that you today? We say all this stuff all the time, and we agree with it because we see there's a particular mindset going on, right? Mm -hmm. We see the mindset. Like the crab in the bucket mentality. Yeah. Don't get mad at me now because I'm I'm not talking about you know where you live. I'm just talking about how we think about ourselves and how we think about God sometimes, not where you physically live. After all God has done for us, sometimes our attitude towards Him is not always loving. Mm -hmm. It can be sloppy at little times. It can be careless. Y'all see these neighborhoods with trash be all outside and Nobody wants to pick nothing up. And nobody wants yeah. to clean nothing up. You see about 15 old cars out there and, and tires all off of them. Nobody wants to clean everything up, anything up. No one, they're not going to get fixed. And so our lives are just like that. Our mindsets are just like that. Some old things we need to throw away. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't bring nothing back from the past. We no. can't fix the past. That's we right. can't bring it into today. That's we right. can't fix the stuff in the past. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me, I press forward to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We have to stop trying to fix our past selves and allow the word of God today to transform us and permeate our lives, to change our thinking. We have some stinking thinking, church. Mm. Amen. Now, you may not like me today, but today I consider a mental health day for the church. Amen. Amen. I consider today a mental health day for the church. I want to talk about the mind. And I'm not talking about what the world means when they say I need a mental health day. Uh -huh. They're talking about taking a day off because they might go crazy on somebody mm -hmm. and take somebody out because they're crazy anyway. It's just the medication that's keeping them low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the church refocusing and disciplining its thought life. Disciplining its thought life, refocusing by doing what the Bible says. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You got to know this word. You got to know this Bible because we are dealing with high things. We are dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Things that will make you feel like you're not a child of God. Things that will make you feel like you're not saved anymore. Because you missed the mark. We're dealing with things that make you want to give up instead of dusting yourself off and moving on in God. The Bible encourages us to put on the whole armor of God. We got to have on the helmet of the hope of salvation. If you just hold on a little bit longer, that's, a, that's all you got to do. Hold on because the mind is a terrible thing to waste, especially the mind of Christ. Yes, I want to close with Jeremiah 29 because. The Bible says that God has thoughts towards us. Uh -huh. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Stop meditating on what everybody else is saying about you and focus on what God says about you. Yeah. I have thoughts of peace, saith the Lord, and not evil. I have an expected hope and an end for you. Yes. Then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray, and I will listen to you. Yeah. And when you seek me, you will find me when you search for me with what? With all your of your heart. Amen. With all of your heart. As I close, understand that the Lord has a mind towards us today. Is our mind towards him? Is our mind towards him? Because he wants to reconcile us back unto himself. And he wants to reconcile all of his people. There will be a regathering. And there will be a celebration one day. But in the meantime, we need to have the right mindset to amen. move forward for the sake of the call. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap.